Torrey Hunter's been making a lot of headlines recently, went on a radio station, former big leaguer, a, a black baseball player, uh, talked about racial discrimination he saw in ballparks across the country, but he said it stuck out immensely more when he played at Fenway. He said he would get the racial taunts, they'd be endless. It was particularly worse in Boston at Fenway Park. Uh, how do you react to hearing that? You've been at that ballpark a lot. Uh, it's been backed up by the Red Sox. This did indeed happen. Uh, how do you react? Yeah, first of all, the Red Sox did not try to dodge the issue or soft pedal the issue. They said, absolutely, we acknowledge it. It's happened. No visiting player and none of our employees who are African American should ever hear that. We're aware of it. We're doing what we can to toss people out when we hear that kind of thing. A few years ago, Adam Jones, then playing center field for the Orioles, said that he heard it from the center field bleachers during a game. Uh, the Red Sox, from top to bottom, from team president on down through the players, all acknowledged it, apologized for it. And again, you don't want to paint with a broad brush. When Adam Jones came up to the plate the next night, I happened to be doing the game on the Major League Baseball Network. He got a standing ovation from much of the there crowd. And Chris Sale, who was the pitcher for the Red Sox, stepped off the mound towards second base to allow the ovation to go on longer. And then as it happened, Adam Jones struck out. And they cheered that as Red Sox fans. So that's as it, that's as it should be. Let me tell you a story about Torrey Hunter, which I ordinarily wouldn't, but it ties in here. I'm talking to you from Newport Coast, California, where we have a second home and we happened to be here when COVID-19 hit. And so we just stayed here. This is where we've wound up isolating. I am next door, right there. I could walk over there in 20 seconds, next door to the house that Torrey Hunter lived in when he played for the Angels. I bought this house like two months after he signed with the Tigers. And I kid with him that, you know, once I moved in next door, you just had to get out. You couldn't stand being my neighbor. Okay, so he's gone, but we we stayed in touch. When he was playing for the Angels, he came home one night. His wife and kids were not at home, and he couldn't figure out how to turn off the alarm. So the alarm went off, and two cops showed up. Tory Hunter appeared at the door, and one cop pulled his gun, pointed it at him, and said, get the F on the ground. The second cop, who was the younger and least senior, had his gun out too, but had it pointed toward the ground. Tory, who is as nice a man as you could ever meet, mm -hmm. Tory Hunter, standing in his doorway, said, I live here, uh, I'll go and get my ID. The senior cop marched him into his own home, next door, right there, with a gun at his back. Oh. All right, now nothing came of it. The second cop finally said, I think I know who this is. I think it's Tory Hunter. Nothing terrible comes of it. And eventually the police apologized. Uh, the Angels stood up for him and Major League Baseball stood up for him. They lodged a complaint. I don't know, and neither does Tory. I talked to him just last week about this. Uh, I don't know if, if the cop was disciplined, but they did get an apology, and Tory didn't make that much of a big deal out of it subsequently, but the story is known in baseball circles. So when people say black lives matter, I think because of the events that have happened over the years, and again, most recently, understandably, some people think that means black lives when their actual mortality is in jeopardy. But the bigger meaning of black lives matter is that could never have happened to me at the house next door. Mm -hmm. It isn't just your living and breathing life. It's how the life you live is affected, your opportunities. And even knowing, I'm sure that Tory Hunter has wonderful, close relationships with, with white players and white friends who would go to the last mile for him as he would for them. So he knows that's true. But we all also have to know that what happened to Tory Hunter is also true. And it's a part of his life that would never be a part of mine, but Jordan, it could be a part of yours. Yes. In 1996, I'd just come back from hosting the Olympics in Atlanta. Jackie Joyner Kersey is one of the great Olympians of all time. She's from East St. Louis, Illinois. And I lived in St. Louis most of my adult life. My son Keith was then 10 years old. About a week after the Olympics, Al Joyner, Jackie Joyner Kersey's brother, 
who was a less noted Olympian, but he was a medalist in the triple jump. He was stopped by the police driving a nice car through a suburban neighborhood. And he was hassled until they figured out who he was. That prompted me to tell my 10-year-old son, Keith, who from the time he could think was a sports fan. So we're driving around and I said, Keith, I want you to know something. And the, this was the example I used. Ozzie Smith and I are virtually the same person. We're close to the same age. We weren't born or raised in St. Louis. We came from other places, but we've been embraced in St. Louis. We're thought of as St. Louisans. We're in roughly the same economic class. Ozzie's house isn't far from ours, but nobody's gonna stop us in this car unless I speed or run a light or have an accident. But Ozzie could be stopped because he's black in, the, in a car like this. They probably recognize him and say, oh, Ozzie, have a good game tonight. But that's, that's an indignity. That's something that's an assault on your person, even if you're not physically hurt. And I don't think that that was anything heroic on my part. What I'd like my, my black brothers and sisters to understand, and I think most of them do, is that millions upon millions of white Americans may not get it completely because we, we can't walk in their shoes, but our hearts are in the right place. And I think that the vast majority of white people that I've grown up with and spent time with would have reacted the same way, not just to George Floyd, they would have reacted the same way to Al Joyner or to Tory Hunter. Um, there are more allies out there than the present horrible events may lead people to believe. But that doesn't soft pedal the horror of those events. And the fact that we have to figure out good intentions by most people are not enough to stop the horrors perpetrated by some people. We gotta figure out how we can do better.